Okay. Um, so today, I would like to touch on the laws of um, cause and effect. And um, some people call it karma. Um, but really, it's just the cause and effects of the universal laws that are before us every single day. And what's what's what it really comes down to is how how balanced we could operate in this lower world. Now, a lot of things that causes our causes our negative um, um, what we think is negative at least. You know, the higher beings do not think it's really negative. It's, it's just creating balance so we could actually ascend out of the pit that we have fallen into. But we have taken on this ego, <coughs> this separate self that we talked about. Um, and this self has, this part of us, has separated itself from the creative force. And in the in the life that we find ourselves in, <clears throat> we are out of connection. So we we don't sense our father. Um, even nature, what there's a scripture that tells us that um, all these animals, you know, the, you know, knows their place, but his people don't know um, um, their place. Well, the people don't know their place. They don't know what to do because they're moving on this part of themselves, which is actually separated from this, the Supreme Source or <clears throat> and what this part of us is doing is actually because it wants to hold fast to what it's doing right now it is actually for lack of a better word protecting you and I from actually regaining control and moving back to our source okay now if you remember um, us talking about um, frequencies or, or, you know, we're going back to that for a little bit, energy. Everything is energy. And in that, understand that every, everything that we do has a reaction in the universe. And not just around us or in the earth, it's in the universe. Every action that we take um, in this earth right here, it has its, its, uh, its equal reaction or consequence in the universe, not just your earth, not just around your space, okay? It keeps on moving. That's why in the scriptures it tells us that their sins have reached heavens because of things that have been done. And actually heaven is actually in the individual, you and I, being individuals of that same spark, or, you know, part of that same flame, and a, and a spark that has moved off into, into being a being, a living being, <coughs> In, in the individual, inside the individual, is where the real spark is at. And this is actually what they call the kingdom. You are that. It's part of the family. The family name, you are part of it. And you have that. That's why I said the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of Yahweh, because you have that within you. It's within you. And so now everything in this fallen state that we do, it has a reaction. It has a, there's a consequence to it. And so we have beings now that are trying to help us to become redeemed or go back home, come out of the, the slumber, the stupor that we have got, we have fallen into and bumped our head and have become unconscious or whatever, our separated state. They are beings that are trying to get us out. These are all part of the same family. And the same family is simply under, under this heaven and earth. It's Yahweh. This is the family of Yahweh. That's really all it really is. It's not the supreme ruler of all that there is all together, but under what we have right now, this is what it is. That's why all souls belong to me, he says. All souls that have become beings in the physical world. Okay, so now, what, what happens now, we've heard of the saying, we reap what we sow, uh, we get back what we put out, what goes around comes around. These are all things that are taking place, really. I mean, this is all part of these laws of cause and effect. So basically, we can't take any negative action and expect to get away with it. In other words, we can't really expect to get away with anything that we do 
in a negative manner because it has to balance itself somewhere because whatever we do, it has, whatever, whatever we do, it creates some kind of um, movement that has an effect. So we, this is something that's going to come around. Okay, so there's always some kind of ramification that's going to come out to somehow at some time to make things come into a balanced mode. So there's no way to get away with anything because everything has to come to a, a balance. Now remember, we talked about um, um, everything in the universe is just energy, um, which we create with this energy. Uh, we create based upon the rate of vibration. Um, which is coming through our thoughts, our words, our actions. Now, this is what we want to make sure that the ego does not control. We want to take these things out of the, the ego's um, possession. And so we have to make, we have to take conscious um, um, efforts. We have to make conscious efforts through taking control of the mind or the thoughts, uh, your heart, and so take this back from um, ego, from ego's control. Okay, so what we're going to do now is get, is get ego to come into line with the higher person, and then ego once again becomes subject and starts to protect us from the lower side because ego got, got hijacked by the lower side, and now ego thinks it's his job to protect you and I from our father. That's what it is. So now, as, as, as we're waking up, we have seen the issue. Now we have to go back, step back, and make things right. Just like uh, Shem and Yaka, they went back, and now they had to undo what was, what was done. Well, it's the same thing that we're doing. But now we have to apply ourselves to undoing what was done. Because now that you find out, Ego is not just going to be like, okay, you got me, so I, I'm going to go back and do what, whatever I have to do. No, it's not. Now is where the battle comes, and the battle is from within the person. It's in the heart and mind of the individual, and that's where the battle is at. And the battle is being waged, and that which is in the battlefield is determined by principalities and powers in high places, what you're going to be dealing with. Okay. <clears throat> The only difference now that you have is the, is, uh, the rate of, 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 of vibration that's going to be, that corresponds with everything. Everything that is has a particular rate of vibration. So as the, as the watchers that are directing you and I, uh, principalities and powers in high places, they're not all what you may call evil here. Now, a lot of them are using those forces that we call evil to actually bring us to uh, a state of balance. That's what they're doing. And so they have their particular corresponding rate of vibration that they actually cause to be imposed in the earth, in our space, to, to move us, to poke, to prod us, to push, to pull us. So we get into the place that they would have us go into that we face what we need to face in, in, on this planet, in the earth. Now, <clears throat> now, the higher the rate of vibration, remember, the less dense or more subtle less physical and more spiritual that we find ourselves or things are. And the lower the vibration, then the more dense and less subtle, we find ourselves more stuck in physical, worldly minds, um, and this is how we get ourselves stuck <coughs> in our thought process, and we move in, in that area. Now, on, remember, on the mental plane, when you think, okay, so now you're, you're in this physical earth right here, and you're thinking, and you're not seeing anything happen. But on the mental plane, and if you are functioning consciously in the mental plane, you could see things, because you could think, and you see up here. But it has to be imposed upon the, or superimposed upon the physical world, so you can't, you, you just don't see it happen right away, because this is physical. So now, but it's still happening. So when we think, we're emitting something now, okay? We're emitting Okay, now we are emitting thoughts, and this is actually it changed the rate by which the thought waves move about on the field of creation. So each thought has its own corresponding vibration or frequency that goes forth, and based upon how you and I could control it or manipulate it, 
by your thought, it comes into creation. Now, so you could create consciously by what you do by your own meditation, the, the thoughts that you and I will choose to do. So we could intentionally increase the rate of vibration to bring you out of the lower world, and we could get ourselves stuck in lower frequencies by following after the things of this planet, this earth, that we have gotten stuck in. Now we've got to remember that. Okay? So positive thoughts is going to increase the rate that you are oscillating at, okay, to bring us to higher levels of consciousness. Now, there's a trick here. Because just because you have greater level of consciousness doesn't mean we're not going to do negative things. That doesn't mean that. Okay? It means that you know so much more that you are not sleeping anymore and you could manipulate things that are, but that everything has to come to the place of balance because nothing could get outside of the Creator's hand. It's going to be that way. Okay, so now lower uh, uh, thoughts, uh, lower negative thoughts usually lead to lower negative words and actions that come forth from the individual. And this is how we get ourselves caught in the cause and effect of this law, or what you call karma. Now, I will go to our first scripture, and it's going to be in Proverbs chapter 26. Okay? <clears throat> and this is a, the wise man, Solomon, and he says here in verse 2, he says, as a fluttering sparrow or a flying swallow will alight, so a curse, causeless, will not come. Okay? This comes based upon the cause and effects of the law. So when, so based upon what we do now, if we're adhering to the ego, or we're adhering to our higher person as we're waking up to that, the actions that we do is going to cause something, one way or another. Now, there are universal laws which cause gates, gateways, to open which results in blessings, <coughs> acceptance of our behavior, okay? Based upon how balanced we are in the mind, body, and our spirit. Or these say, or, or, or actions, or universal law, which causes um, things to happen on the other, in the other, in the other sense, okay, resulting in what we call curses, or what you would call correction, based upon the imbalances that's in our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. That's all in our scripture, but it doesn't lay it out like that. It lays it out in in human actions, whatever the case. It doesn't tell you this God is doing this thing right here, but my friend. If you understand that the kingdom of Yahweh, or what, they, what the Bible says God is in you, and it's a family, and you are simply a member of that family, and you have come into, you have been projected, or projected yourself into matter, okay? The kingdom of that family, when you projected yourself into matter, is in that matter that you have gotten trapped in. So the kingdom of heaven is in you, you are in you, the real you. And you have to wake up, you, inside of this being body, this personality, and you have to do what the creator wants you to do when you wake up. You have to use that vessel because all of a sudden you become that Yahweh. Okay? You're not the father, but remember, it's a family. Okay? The family under heaven has, there's a family that has been projected under heaven, but the family still is in another area of consciousness or dimension, and we have to remember this. So you and I have fallen, and we are caught by this ego at this point, and we are simply doing things that doesn't bring balance. When we wake up, 
This is what we have to do because everything that we're doing is opening gateways. Gateways to either further imbalance or for balance because the Father wants us to come to balance. That's how redemption comes. Now let's go over to Genesis chapter 4. Okay? Redemption comes through you and I doing things that creates balance. So in, in Genesis chapter 4 here, it says um, in verse 3, and on one of Yahweh's Sabbath, this say, I mean, it doesn't say that in the other book, but this is not necessarily wrong. It came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Yahweh. The fruit of the ground. But Yahweh requires more than just the fruit of the ground. Okay. So, here goes verse 4 now. And Abel, besides bringing his offering of the fruit of the ground, so what's going on, also brought a sacrifice of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat. So he brought the required offering. And Yahweh honored Abel and his offering. So one was honored and the other one is not necessarily being honored. But we're going to find that out. So one was honored because he followed the instruction so that was fine. It was accepted. Okay? It was accepted. Okay. But he did not honor Cain's and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So Yahweh said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why are you downcast? Notice this part right here, guys. If, there's a condition here. If you do righteousness, what is righteousness? This will be your righteousness if you do what is told to for you to do based upon the level of awareness that you have come to and you know what your father has said. That is your righteousness, right? <clears throat> Will you not be accepted as able? And if you do not do righteousness, notice the movement in an errant manner, the imbalances, it's crouching at your door, the gateway that's being opened. Gateways, always something being opened. The desire to sin, this is the, the separated guy now, who had, we, it's caught up by these desires, these passions and desires, <clears throat> okay, it's with you, but you and I have to overcome that. It's not going to be taken from us. It says you have to overcome it. Now, don't think you're any different than Cain, and don't think you're any different than Abel. Okay? By your mind, you have that which is in you to create the circumstances that the gateway is open for you, myself also, that we can receive greater things. Now, you think of uh, parents. Parents have got a lot of uh, got children. Um, or, or multiple children, and they don't treat them all the same way because it's based upon what they believe one could handle or, and one can handle and based upon how they feel they need to be trained. If one is stubborn, they're not going to just give them everything in their stubbornness or if they're, if, or, or if they're <clears throat> in the place that they're, not, they're, 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 they're full of ingratitude and they're selfish. They're not going to get the same as the one who is really selfish and full of gratitude. The one who does what the parents are, are saying to do is going to be trusted more and is going to give a, be given more leeway to, to do more because they're trusted. The other child, they still have to train that child to get that child, the, 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 the bentness that's in that child to get it all straightened out before they're able to trust that child to have them move in the same area. Now, some people may say, well, it's not fair because you let Johnny do this, but you don't let me do that. Well, it's, it is fair. It is fair because Johnny and this, the other child that's complaining doesn't do the same thing. They don't have the same mindset. Okay, They're not doing the same things when it comes to their creative forces. And so as parents, they have to be trained so that they could come to the place that they are most likely to become redeemed from their fall. All of us. That's just what it comes to. Okay? So here we're looking at 
Cain and Abel, it's telling Cain, listen, something is at this gateway right here, and if you don't do something, it's going to pull you into this area that we're going to have some more issues. Now, we'll go to Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, and we're going to look at something over there, Daniel. <coughs> um, in Daniel, of course, Daniel was during the time that the Persians and the Babylonians were, um, were ruling. But in chapter 5, some things happened. And in verse 27, we're going to look at that really quickly. Okay? So in verse uh, 27, this guy had a dream, and he wanted to know what was going on with his dream. But in verse 27, we're going to look at that particular verse, because it says, Tekel, <coughs> because he saw this thing written on the wall. But it says here, to wait. To wait. Okay? When, 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 Cain, when, Cain, when Cain was told, you must overcome it, Cain was being told, you must create balance in this. You must create balance. You have to get out of the mode of imbalance, and you have to bring forth the balance offering so that you could be balanced, or, you, or your efforts will be accepted. So it says, tackle, await. To weigh. It says, you have been weighed on the scale. You've been weighed in the balance. That's what happened to Cain. Cain's activities were weighed in the balance. And based upon that, there were gateways, cause and effects, that caused things to move in a certain area based upon Cain's choices. The same thing was happening with Abel, but it was happening in the other direction based upon his choices. Okay? Because Cain and Abel, they both have to create balance to be, to come to the place that they get greater consciousness, that they wake up. All of us do. So, here goes now. These guys had done something, and now their actions are way in the balance of the scales, and are found lacking. You're found deficient. You're found wanting. Cain's actions were weighed in the balance and found deficient. Okay? So he couldn't be accepted. But Abel's offering was also weighed in the balance and it was found to be in balance. It was found to be balanced. So there were two things going on right now based upon the gateway that was going to be before them or that's always in front of us. And whatever we do, our action is going to create a, a corresponding reaction. Now, what happened with Cain? Cain was angry. Cain was angry, and Cain went forth, and based upon the, act, the anger, there was something in the heart, mind, okay? Words were probably came out, but you know one thing for sure, an act, an action came out. An action because that gateway was open and the passions and desires and the anger, whatever was there, the negative forces, which was, which was the spirit of anger, which, which he actually um, sub, subdued himself to, followed, moved him through that door. And he partook of one thing. What it could have been something different. Gateways are always being opened in front of us every single day based upon our own action. And we're always being weighed. We're always being weighed to see if we are balanced or not. And it doesn't have to be that some beings are weighing us, guys. No. All you have to do is look at our conscience. And we'll know based upon where you are, check out the conscience. Okay? And you're gonna, and that's your scale. That's our scale. That's our spiritual scale. Now let's go with Job or Eob, um, the book of Eob, and we're gonna look at verse. I'm going to chapter 31. Okay, chapter 31, and let's look at verse six. It says, "Let Yahweh weigh me." Now, remember what I said now. Yahweh is not outside of you. 
Okay? The reason why we think Yahweh is outside of us is because the separate self has us in that program mode and we're not connected like a well-tuned nervous system. So let Yahweh weigh me in just scales because just scales is going to create, if I'm just, it's going to, if, if everything comes out that is right, I'm going to have balance. But if I'm not right, I, there are imbalances there and they both open gateways. You saw the gateway for Cain, he was angry. He didn't have to fall for that. He had to go that in that direction. He could have turned around, but he would have to use his mind, set his mind to, to control the passions and desires that was moving through him, the anger. He would have to set his mind and move against that because the separate self was moving in a certain direction, and he had to master that. He, has to, he had to come and get control over that. So we mean just scales, and he will know my integrity. The integrity of your heart is going to be known. But it's weighed. You can weigh that. And when we weigh ourselves, we just need to not hide ourselves from who we are. Because if we hide ourselves from who we really are, we live in denial, and the power doesn't come to help us to actually help us to overcome ourselves, the, old, the, the, the very deficiencies that we find within ourselves. Okay? So what happens now when we do that? <clears throat> we, we come to this place that we need to uh, create balance, but we, we, deny, we deny things. Okay? So we, den we are doing something, and then we deny ourselves, or whatever causes us to deny ourselves, deny that we have an issue, and based upon the fact that we deny our, that we have an issue, it has an effect. The effect is that we're not able to see how to come out of the issue that we have because we're denying it. We're denying that we have that problem in the first place, so the effect now, we don't get the light to help us with the issue. But if we will say, listen here, I have this issue, that's a different door that's open now. Here comes another door that opened to give you enlightenment to help you and I <clears throat> with the issue that we find ourselves in because we're not denying ourselves anymore. We're not hiding ourselves. We are coming and we're doing what Yahweh has told us to do. We're confessing that we have an issue. That's why the law tells you to confess. Okay? It tells us that we have to confess. When we confess, we're actually acknowledging what's going on within us. And now, here comes a gateway to assist us with what we have just acknowledged. But if we won't acknowledge it, we're in denial. Well, that's another gateway. And it's all coming through what we have chosen to do. There's a cause and there's an effect that comes with it. <clears throat> now, as I said before, the powers of heaven is simply trying to redeem us. There's a plan to redeem us. And everybody's going to be redeemed. But in the, in the redemption, there has to be, which is set up, there has to be that which is going to be at the threefold, okay? And that's why you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's why you have Noah having three sons in the same area, okay? And that's why you have three different levels of redemption. And the first one that we're looking at right now are the holiest of the holy ones, they call it. Now, these are the ones who now are going to follow the Lamb wherever the Lamb goes. These are going to be the one for this right here. After that, you're going to have those who are redeemed unto the, la the Lamb's bride. Okay? But at first, you're going to have those who are redeemed unto Messiah. Then after that, you're going to have those who are redeemed unto, that, to, um, those who are redeemed unto Messiah. But it's all in the same family. And it's all Yahweh redeeming everyone to a balanced state, which everyone once had at a certain time. Now, we'll look at the laws really quickly. Okay? In the law, let's look at Deuteronomy. And we're going to look at the laws as Yahweh has set it out for Moshe. 
Now remember, Moshe is simply setting up a pattern, and so if, if we're not awake past what Moshe has set up, there's no need to go any further. As the Father awakens you, now you're seeing that there's more, that Moshe, you're seeing the intention of Moshe, and then you, we, we need to walk in that area. Because he is opening the doorway based upon us doing what we were told to do. Okay, so because we did something that we were told to do, the effects now come to us understanding what Moshe, Moshe's intent was all about. It's an awakening. More light comes through because we're not blocking it. Okay? But if we don't, all of a sudden, less light comes in and we, we have what you call negative karma. Because we didn't do something, then all of a sudden, the light didn't shine through, so we find ourselves further in the state of death. In Deuteronomy 28, in, uh, let's look at verse 1. Deuteronomy 28. He says here, And it will be, if you will listen diligently to the voice of Yahweh your Father, by observing and doing all his laws which I command you this day, then here comes the effect. That Yahweh your Father will set you high above all the nations of, on earth as kings and priests. Well, then said that, but that's, but, but that's what he will do, okay? And all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you because you're simply accepted. Accompany you because you follow the instructions. <coughs> because you follow the instructions, cause of this, these are the effects that comes. It's a doorway that's open for you and I. And all these blessings come from that, based on the fact that or it's going to depend upon how balanced we are in mind, body, and spirit. Now, let's go to verse 15 now. Let's go to verse 15. And in verse 15 now, it says, however, the other way around, if you do not obey, if you do not follow the instruction, Okay? If you do not love Yahweh, because that's what it is, right? Yahweh, your father, and do not carefully follow his laws and his statutes, which I command you this day, because of that, then all these corrective actions will come upon you and accompany you. This is a different doorway. This is a, this, this, all this will be said to Cain. Chapter 28 was being told to Cain, if you do well, then all these blessings, won't these blessings come to you, Cain? And if you do well, then these things are at that door too. This is the other door. The desire to go in the, in, in the, in verse 15 down is with you, but you have to overcome it so you don't move in that area. That's what Cain is being told. That's all Cain is being told. Now, he was Yahshua, because remember, Yahshua is, is the one who set the example now for us to follow, right? Yahshua died leaving an example for us to follow. So let's go with John chapter uh, 8, and we're going to look at what he's saying here. Now, this man woke up to, a, to, um, to greater consciousness, and because he was sent into this earth to help wake up the ones who had fallen in. That's what his job was. And so he told those who believed in, in his words and what he said, he told them, listen here, you're obligated to follow me to do exactly what I say because I'm, or I'm the one who's sitting here to make sure that you receive a little bit more light. Okay? I'm the one who's sitting on the physical plane to speak, to put spurt before you so you are going to wake up. 
those who are in front of me right now and those who are to come later on. So chapter 8, <clears throat> listen to verse 29. Then Yahshua said to them, Okay, let me see you. Okay. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. And you could say the very same thing. Okay? I am. I am what I choose. Okay? Simply, he chose. What did he choose? He chose to do what his father said and be part of the family to do what the family is all about. So here it says, I am he, but you simply, it's, it's simply I am. I am what I choose. <clears throat> if I choose to allow the lower man to rule, I'm going to go into that gateway. And if I choose to put away the lower man and get the ego to come in, into, into conformity with my higher person, I am that too. I am what I choose. Everybody, just as Yahshua says here, so are you. Okay? You are, you, you are he, if you will. He says, I am he, you are the same thing. Because that's what's in you. Okay? So he knows that. And that I do nothing of myself. If you do nothing of yourself, but just do as your father taught you. That's what you speak and do. Guess what? You are also he. He said, I am he. You are also the same thing. Because that's what you're expressing in here. The he is the only begotten son. That's all you're expressing. <clears throat> okay. He says, and he who sent me is with me. Guess where? Where's the kingdom of heaven? He who sent everyone or projected everyone in here into the earth, guess where he is, if you want to call that, right in your core. If you and I choose to follow the things that are negative with our thought processes, the gates for that negative thought process opens. And that's where we choose to go. Why? Because that's what we chose. It's the law of cause and effect. We start, because we chose that, that door of anger, whatever it is, it opens. And because we chose to follow that by thought, we have moved into that doorway. And then we have to experience it. We may need some balancing after that because the corrective action is going to go come, come in and find us there because that's not the way of redemption. We have to come to a higher level of awareness so something is going to meet us in there to turn us around. It's called a curse, they call it. It's simply correcting. It's simply your father loves you so much he doesn't want you to go any further down into the hole. So here comes the corrective measures to get you and I to turn around because he loves us. Whoever he loves, he chastens. So if you're going too far down, you're going to be chastened. Simply, that's all it is. You're going to be chastened. You and I, we have to be because we are stubborn. We're stubborn. We don't like to do what the Father says. We like to do what ego here says. We got to stop listening to ego or Igor. Stop listening to that guy. And when we stop listening to that guy, then we put chains on him, bring him under the subjection of the Father. How do you do it? You set your mind, okay? And because you set your mind to do that, and you follow the Father's instructions, doing what he says, he accepts that, and you can say, I am too. Because you are what you are choosing. You're choosing for the Son to come and dwell in you because you simply did what the Father said to do. And if we don't, then something is crossing at our door. It's another gateway over there to take us into another direction. If we choose that, then here comes the effect of that one. Now, let's go to John, one of the apostles, one of the apostles of Yahshua, 1 John, 
Okay, so first John, uh, we're gonna go to chapter three. First John chapter three. And look at verse 22. <clears throat> John was the apostle of Yahshua. Okay? And Yahshua says that the Father is with him and he won't leave him because he always do what pleases the Father. So the Father is with you too. You know what? He's with you whether you, you are going to do what he says or not do what he says. He is. You're only going to receive certain corresponding activity or vibration, though, okay, based upon the actions and thoughts and words that you choose. So he's with you there, too, but it only comes into a corrective mode where we do something that's not what he says. So Yahshua is not necessarily just saying, well, he's with me and not with somebody else because he's with everybody. But he's going to work on my behalf and he's going to work on your behalf when we do what he says. And we know he's with us then because of the promises that's there because you and I always does what's pleasing in his sight. We're going to follow those instructions. We always show that we love him. If you love me, he says, keep my commandments. Okay, so here in John chapter 3, in verse 22, uh, John says here, he says, and whoever and whatever we ask, we receive from him, notice why, cause. Cause. If you do this, this cause brings an effect. Because you did this, here comes the effect. Because we keep his commandments, his laws, that his judgments, whatever, and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. It's the laws of cause and effect. Moving. It's just karma. <clears throat> if we do one thing, there, one thing is, one doorway is presented before us. We still don't have to choose that doorway. We could turn around. We could still turn around. <clears throat> Positive or negative. We don't have to choose the right thing. We don't have to choose the bad thing. It's simply presented before us. Now, if it's presented before us and we choose it, then we're going to partake of whatever door we chose to go through. Because that now becomes our experience, because we're living in there. If you go into a door, and in that room there are certain furnishings, that's your experience. That's what you're seeing. That's what you're going to be dealing with in that room. Same thing as to what I'm talking about. But I just look at all those furnishings that's in there as experiences that you got to deal with. Okay? It's your neighbor all of a sudden becoming hateful over here because... You and I were hateful to somebody else. And if someone's stealing from us because we stole from somebody else. Or it could be the other way around. It could be you receiving all these great gifts because you were very, very in the place of being full of gratitude and you were giving in the same manner. And all of a sudden, the universe is turning back around to you and you're receiving. The law of cause and effect. Okay? And the thing that we've got to do to control this law of cause and effect and have it to work for us is to control Igor. We have to control the one that is now trying to protect us from going through the gates that brings everything to us that we could say, Yahweh is with us, as Yahshua was saying there. Because he's going to be with you either way, but they're different experiences. One experience is correction. That's Cain. One experience, guys, A, is acceptance. As with Abel. These are the experiences that we have. So because we do what's pleasing in his sight, this is where everything goes. 
<clears throat> now we're going to go over to um, Job, Eob, you know, the book of Job. Okay. Um, Job 11. Okay. <clears throat> and J Job is really trying to let us know the hand of Yahweh and how much we have to respect that. And if we do certain things, how certain things are going to be, we're going to affect other things. But it's all in what you call Yahweh, which is really in you, but you have beings that are watching over this planet. These are your brothers and sisters in the same manner. They are also part of the same family, and they have always been called by, <coughs> um, by your scriptures, Yahweh. Because they were there to direct a certain people in a certain area. Now, there were other brothers and sisters who worked with other nations to bring them to a certain place too, because everybody under heaven is being worked with. Everybody. Now, in Job chapter 11, <clears throat> listen to verse 14 here. He said, If you would only put far away from you the iniquity in your hands, and will not allow wickedness to dwell in your tent, this is your body, that's what he's talking about, your body, your tent, your home, whatever. <clears throat> okay, but when we get to that part right now, um, this is your, in your family, in your body, in your mind, which is your thought processes, okay, in our actions, that's where it's at, in our words. That's all part of the body. Okay, your house is part of your body because that's what it, it's it. That's, a, that's your family. That's your body. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, then surely you could lift up your face without spot or blemish. You will have no blame. No one could say you are this or that because there's no corrections. Yes, you could stand firm and have no fear. You will then forget your troubles and remember it only as water, waters that have passed on by. And your life would be brighter because light would come in. Then at noonday, noon day, <clears throat> though you were in darkness, you would then be like the morning. He's simply letting you know that when we do the things that Yahweh says to do, we start receiving light. That's all he's saying, but he's putting it in this manner, and we don't really see it when we just read the Bible. <clears throat> okay. You would also have trust, for then there would be hope. Yes, you would look around and take your rest in confidence. You would also lie down, and no one would uh, make you afraid. Yes, many would solicit you with supplication, but the eyes of the wicked will fail. Then shall, uh, they shall not escape, and their only hope will be to lose their lives. Now, this is Eob's friends now coming to him, and based upon what he knows, which is true, but he doesn't know the whole, the whole scope, and he's saying, Eob, listen, man, this is the deal. If, if you were doing these things right here, the stuff that's coming up on you, brother, right now wouldn't come because this is the deal. So you wouldn't be having these issues. Brother, something is happening to you. You just have to own up to it. But they didn't know that Yahweh was bringing, already bringing Eob to another level. But the things that they were saying was nevertheless true. <clears throat> but they weren't taken into account that it, something could happen to you that's bad too, even though you were doing the right thing. Look, look, at, all the, look at all the apostles. Look at Yeshua. Look at the prophets. <clears throat> they were all doing something that was for the benefit of lifting their brothers up. 
but certain things were already predetermined for them. Well, EO was being lifted up. These other guys are not taken into account. They weren't taken into account. All that could really take place when Yahweh's going to move somebody. They don't know. They don't know. But nevertheless, he was saying, listen here, if you're like this, your noonday, your light is going to come forth. Now, the old light did shine forth too because through all the commotion that was going through with his friends, all of a sudden Yahweh dealt with him through them speaking to him. Where were you when I did this? Where were you when I did that? Who are you to, to come over here and obscure the, the counsel of the, the Mighty One? Who are you? And he had to admit, really, I really, you know, I really can't say that I, I did nothing wrong because I really don't even know the deal. I could have sit back and continue to trust Yahweh and believe that whatever is going on is my benefit. Somewhere on the line. Somewhere in the line. Because when Yahweh determines to move, this is the family now. Remember, you and I have been cut off. You and I don't know what's best for us. We don't. We know some things based upon what we have been given, what we are awake to right now. But in the ultimate scope of things, we don't know. What did you do five lifetimes ago that you need to balance today? What did you do the last one that you need to balance today? You don't know, but those who are over everything and are the watchers, they know, and they are the same family. And they're going to do certain things because if they're moving you in the right direction, these are principalities and powers in high places, high offices that's not in your dimension, and they're controlling other forces that's going to put a licking on you and me, or put some acceptance of what we may call blessings. And they're going to use the forces of what we call evil to put, us, to put a licking on us sometimes, if that's what we need, because they are the watchers. Okay, we're going to go over the numbers real quick. <clears throat> numbers, and know and respect that we have to walk in this certain um, mode of... Um, of acceptance okay you're going to have confidence when you and I know that we have done what Yahweh has asked of us and we have not gone outside of that you're going to have confidence that whatever you're going through hey your father is allowing that thing to further refine you to give you something greater than you have right now chapter 23 look at verse 8 How can I curse those who Yahweh has not cursed? Well, that goes to anyone. So if you and I are doing the things that Yahweh says us to do and there's acceptance with us, we don't really have to worry. Because if Yahweh brings something forth for us, it's, to, it's for our own benefit. Okay? He said, how can he curse who Yahweh has not cursed? No one could. No one could. Whatever comes into your life is what's for you. It's not that the other guy doing whatever. We have to see it from this level. Okay? And how can I denounce those whom Yahweh has not denounced? We can't. We can come forth and talk all kind of evil about someone to tear them down and defame them. But in the real scope of things, hey, it's not going to take place here. We're doing that which is proper in our Father's eyes. It's going to go just the way that the Father wants it to go. I'm going to go over to the law again <clears throat> in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 23. Let's get to the five. Good Okay, so how can I curse those who Yahweh has not cursed can't denounce? Now remember Balaam and Balak, right? Okay. It says here, however, Yahweh, your father, would not listen to Balaam, but turned their curse into a blessing for you. 
Why? Because you did something. So there's an effect. Because Yahweh your father loves you. Why did that happen? Okay? Yahweh your father loves you. Whatever they were trying to do, it couldn't be done because you remember the children of Israel, they went forth and they followed the instructions of Moshe and they set up their camp exactly how Moshe told them to, to set up the camp. And when 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 uh, when Balaam looked upon that, he said the same thing that Eov said. I can't curse anybody who Yahweh hasn't cursed. Or that Eov in numbers in numbers it was said that. How can I curse what Yahweh hasn't cursed? That's exactly what he said. When he looked upon how they set up themselves. They set themselves up based upon the pattern which was above, as Yahweh told Moshe to do. Now, we got to remember now, these cause and effects comes from the, our energy. I'm, okay, so I'm going to close here in a minute, but I want to, I want to go to a, a, a certain scripture right now. And Proverbs chapter 13, <clears throat> listen to Proverbs chapter 13 real quickly. The things that we say, things that we think, remember, and th this, when we think, we're emitting thought waves. Thought waves. Out of the abundance of the heart, the passions and desires that's in there, the mouth is going to speak. Proverbs 13, verse 1. It says, a wise son values his father's instruction, but a scorner will not listen to rebuke. Rebuke is correction. A man will eat. Now, this word eat right here, I'm not going to get into the, what it means and the strongs whatever, and all that stuff. <clears throat> but just looking for you and I to assess what this eat is. When you eat something, it becomes part of you. It becomes part of your experience in this world. Okay? You eat an apple, and you walk down the street, guess where the apple is at? It's with you. Right there in your belly. And the apple is putting within you whatever you, you eat, got in it. Whatever it has in it, it's assimilating it to you. Well, this is actually what happens with our tongues and our thought process. It's coming with us because we have set a field on fire, okay? Fire, because fire isn't always bad, guys. Fire, you could use fire for great things, but fire could be destructive too. Okay, so he goes now. A man will eat the fruits are the law of the fruits of his mouth. The transgressors will eat violence, but not everyone is going to be a transgressor. Well, the transgressor eat violence because he's a transgressor. He brings forth the effect of violence. But the, trans, the one who doesn't transgress, he brings peace because he does the things that are pleasing to his father. So he brings forth, he keeps those rules that his father tells him to keep, so he brings forth peace right from his core. Right from his core. Now we'll go to Romans real quick. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And we're going to look at, let's start at, um, let's start at verse 12. So in this, Shaul says, Therefore, do not allow sin or error or the, the, the ego to rule in your mortal bodies. That means the body that you and I have right now do not allow certain things to rule in it. Now, how is it going to rule in it, guys? Based upon what we're eating. Okay, so we're going to 
eat the fruits of our thoughts. We're going to eat the fruits of our um, words and our actions. What's the fruit? The fruit is the food. Whatever it is, that's what we could expect. That's what we're going to be expecting. Okay? So, don't let this rule in the mortal bodies, but it's going to come into the mortal body based upon what we have created. Created from our own thought process. That which we are emitting upon the field, the every field of creation. Okay. And so we don't let this come now. Therefore, uh, just as sin entered, now let me see, I think I messed up here. Okay. Therefore, do not allow sins to rule in your mortal bodies so that you do not obey its, its lust. Because that's what happens when you and I are allow that door to open and then we go and partake of that door, we're simply going to allow the lust that's in that door, we're going to be experiencing that. We're going to be obeying that. Whatever is in that door, we're going to go and we're going to be dealing with whatever is in there, that's what we're going to want to experience. And if it's the lower things, guys, we're being pulled further down into a hole. If it's the higher things, we're going to be be lifted up. That's what is, is taking place right now. So, back to the law. Back to the law. Leviticus. Okay, Leviticus. This is all in our law already. Moshe set this up, and there's a pattern of what's above. <coughs> in 19, this will be verse 36. Leviticus 19, verse 36. Okay, here goes. You shall have honest balances. Now, don't do it the way you and I want it to be done based upon our, our ego. No, we honest is what your father wants. Okay, because this is what's going to create balance. This is how your father redeems you when you and I will do what he says. He creates balance. When balance is being created, it brings forth further light, more and more light. Your light, okay, it'll be as a noonday. Even though evil and darkness are around you, this will be, your experience will be as a noonday. That's what he says. But, we, but we've got to do something. Okay, so honest balances, honest ways, weights, and honest ether. And an honest hen. I am Yahweh, your father, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, the, the, the regular guy will just look at this and says, okay, this is what happened to them a long time ago, back in that time period right there. But it's telling you something here. Okay? It's telling you something. Okay, so you have, you have Ephah. Okay? And then you have um, a hen. He's, a, he's just telling you in all the way that you look at life, in all its different aspects, make sure that you create balance in it. Create balance in your thought processes. Create balance in your words. That your words create balance or create balance within your heart so your words will create balance when it comes out of you, create balance in your actions, in all your relationships. That's what the hen is. The hen is what, whatever you're pouring out of yourself. It's a, it's a liquid measure. Okay? It's like the drink offering. Whatever you're pouring out of yourself, make sure it is proper, it is balanced. In other words, be, be true to yourself and be true to the higher nature. Because the Father, where the Father? Within you brings you out of Egypt. What is Egypt symbolic of, guys? Our errant behavior. They call it sin. 
I'm Yahweh your father who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The influence of the lower nature. The influence of ego. But in the things that you do and express the father, it has to be honest. It has to be balanced. So you think. Okay. <coughs> Proverbs. Yeah. Pro and then we come back to the long clothes. Okay. Proverbs. Chapter 11. He goes this wise man. Okay. Uh, this wise man in 11. He says, Dishonest scales, weights, measures, are an abomination to Yahweh. But a true weight is his delight. He's not talking about just you and I weighing things. No. What are you expressing from the Father? Okay. What are you expressing from the Father that's coming through you and based upon what you know, is your conscience right with it? Is my conscience right with it? Because if our conscience is not right, it's not balanced. If I don't want to do something, and I create this facade to do what I want to do, but I know that's not what the Father wants, because I know that the moment I think in a certain manner, that I'm already going in that direction, that door's already open, and that's where I'm going. But I, but I think to myself, well, I actually didn't uh, do it. I'm just, I'm just entertaining that thought every day. It's already a problem. I'm already moving in there. That door is open, ready, and I have crossed the threshold, really. I'm playing with fire. Okay? I can't have unequal weights and measures. Okay? These are judgments which create imbalances. Okay? It creates imbalances in your bag, your, your, our vessels. Okay? Which is, which is the currency that we, we really have. That's the, that's the money. That's the, that's the real currency. Now, I'm going to go back to the law now, and we're going to finish in the law. Um, De Deuteronomy. Okay, so remember now, you can't have unequal weights and balances. These are judgments which create imbalances in your vessel, which is what is, is your bag. Okay? Your vessel where the currencies of Yahweh is. That's your bag. You have a bag of money? That's the currency. Well, your vessel is a bag. Where the currency of Yahweh is. Now, notice this is in chapter 25 now. Deuteronomy 25. In verse 13. Do not have two different weights in your bag. One light and one heavy. You can't follow two different laws. You can't, you can't have the law of man and want the law of your father to run together because they're going to have some co conflicts here. It's not going to bring forth balance. If you have one light and one heavy, you put on a scale, it's not going to be balanced. He's not telling you to not have something that's light and not have something that's heavy. That's not what's being said. It's based upon your judgment. Be fair. Be fair to yourself. Be fair to your fellow man. Express your father. Go in straight out. Because when we do certain things, it causes something else to come about. And then when it causes this other thing to come about, then we're either going to be accepted or there's going to be a corrective mode that goes into play, and then we're going to say, okay, Yahweh is, is cursing me, or Yahweh is blessing me. Which one do we want? You can't have two different weights that you're judging by. There's only one, there's only one weight. And it, we already read that. It says righteous weights. Balances. Okay? 
Right. Okay. In, in Leviticus now, in Leviticus, let's go to Leviticus chapter 19. And it's going to be our last scripture. But these things are going to cause other things to happen. They cause an effect. And it's based upon what's coming out of the frequency of our hearts. Because that's the first part of action, guys. Okay? The thoughts in the heart. Okay, Leviticus chapter 19. Let's look at verse 35. It says, do not use dishonest standards. when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Because whatever you're doing with it, it's going to create some problems of, of being balanced. Be true. Do accurate. Now, if you're just thinking about it, if you're going to build a house and you start having inaccurate weight um, balances and measurements, you're going to create a messed up structure. That's what we're going to do. If we're, if we're going to build a house and we have some, sta some, um, some, some measurements that's inaccurate, we're going to build something that's really messed up. Well, take that now and put it into our life experiences. That's what we're going to do. Put it in our life experiences. And what are we expressing from the individual? What are we expressing from the thought process? What are we expressing... Um, from our actions, what are we expressing from our words? And whatever we're expressing, now we can look to see what we are creating. Is that structure something that's going to be balanced? Or is it something that's going to create some other issue? Because we're opening doors. We're opening doors right from our hearts. Okay, look at, look at, look at verse 36. You should have honest balances, honest weights, honest ephah. Yahweh your father, I am Yahweh your father who brought you out of the land of Egypt. We just looked at that. It's so important that we're seeing it with the priest because Leviticus is really what the priest is supposed to be dealing with. So you're seeing it with the priest. And we have seen it with the Deuteronomy. It's telling you the same thing. Everything that we're expressing, that we project, it has to be able to be bringing balance in this planet. Okay? Furthermore, it's moving outside of this planet to the whole universe. Our thoughts. This is why these guys were able to hijack us and create this world that has been created right now. They created it based upon our collective thoughts. But they, were, they have to first um, get us into a place that they control our will. They keep us ignorant and, ignorant and then control our will. And usually how they control our will, it was something that we think we want. Some passions and desires that's of the lower nature, that's a door, and they allow that door to be opened. We now move into that door and accept something in there, and before you know it, we find ourselves captivated by there or captured. Well, it's not over. We don't have to stay there because we could, we could turn that all around. It's nature. You could never hold nature down. Okay? You could bomb this place over a certain amount of years, it's going to come back. Radiation is going to move outside of it. It's going to just come back and work again in a natural manner, and it's going to take all those things out given time. So it doesn't matter how far off we are. If we will simply turn back to doing what the Father says, then guess what? Because we have done that, it's going to create an effect that we go back to the area of creating balance and once again become 
in, in unity or in oneness with our Father in heaven. 